Okay, so we are doing um, a new series just for this month, and what's going on is you, just the last two or three weeks, you guys gave us questions that you wanted answered, and we're starting a new series called We Don't Talk About, and we are talking about things that we don't always get a chance to talk about, and so you had tons of questions, and we took some of those questions, we turned them into a series, and then... The last week of our series, we're going to actually try to answer all the rest that we couldn't get to. So the big one, the hugest question that came up was that we don't talk about other religions. We don't talk about other religions a lot. And a lot of you are like, hey, we don't talk about other religions. Hey, can you talk about some of those? Hey, um, how... Well, tell us a little bit, how do we know Christianity is true? How do we know Christianity, you know, what are the differences? All these questions were asked, and so today, we are going to try to answer those questions. Now, you need to understand, look at your note sheet. It's two pages, okay? Um, it is a lot of information we're going to try to tackle, and I am going to try to, you know, just boom, like I'm just throwing tons of stuff out. So here's what I am giving you permission to do. You are welcome today. During my sermon, I never lie to us, you may ask questions. You may go, wait, hold on, Trav, explain this. Now, here's all I'm asking is, a couple of responses I might have. One, I might answer your question. Two, I might say, oh, oh, no, I'm getting there, hold on. Or three, I might say, you know what, this is the right time. I'll answer it right after. Those will be one of my three responses. But I'm giving you the freedom to ask questions. Because I want this time to be a time for us to have clarity in what's going on. And so we're going to be talking about other religions. And so the first thing that I want you to understand is we start going into this topic. There's some things I want you to know. Trav, why? Whoa, you're talking about other religions. Wow, this is crazy. I can't believe we're doing that. Well, here's some things I want you to know is, one, I'm not going to be able to get in really um, talk a lot about every single religion. We just don't have time. But I will tell you, here's some things that I want you to understand about why we're talking about it. One is this, is I want to give you more confidence if you want to write a note, she says, I want to give you more confidence about what we believe, okay? So I'm hoping today I'm going to clarify and to give you more confidence about what you believe. Secondly, though, is this. I want you hopefully today that the more we're going to learn, you're going to learn more about other religions. You're going to learn more that actually Christianity is the one and only, that Jesus Christ is the only God, the only way. And my hope today is that it'll create more compassion. You will have compassion for people who are lost. Okay, so this is not a time that all of a sudden Trav gave you all this stuff, mic drop, boom, and then you go, I'm going to go blast other people. Ha <laughs> ha, you guys are idiots, you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to hell, ha <laughs> ha. No, that's not my hope. My hope is that you'll actually have more compassion about other religions. And the last thing is this, is I want to create conviction today. Conviction for you to want to bring others to Christ. Because if Jesus Christ, we're going to talk about today, if he is the only way that he claims in John 14, 6, he's the only way to heaven, that means your friends that are lost, that don't know Jesus Christ, that aren't Christian, that means there's only one option for them, and it's not heaven, it's hell. And I'm hoping there's a conviction today that you go, oh my goodness, my friends don't know. Not my friends are wrong, they don't know the right one. It should be conviction of, man, they don't know the right way, let me help them not argue them, let me help them. So that's what I'm hoping is going to happen today. So here's what I want to talk about. First of all, when I was in college, you know, I grew up in a Christian family, um, went to Christian school for a while, then my eyes were open, I went to Vista High. It was a culture shock for me, um, believe it or not. I thought that um, non-Christians only went to non-Christian schools and only Christians went to Christian schools. So when I went to Vista High, I thought me and my twin brother were the only Christians there. Um, boy, were we shocked. We had an amazing Christian club, over 200 people in our Christian club. Um, it was awesome. But grew up in this Christian home. And then I graduate and I go to college. I'm at Palomar College over here. It's third, second, third semester. I take a world religions class that is going to tell me about every religion in the world. And I learn about everything. And boy, are my eyes open. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if they believed. And I'll be honest with you, at that point, I would have argued that, you know what, I am a Christian, I think this is the way, but if you like your way, you're fine. And as I opened my eyes, there was a lot of things I was learning. God was taking me on a journey. Because actually, I want you to know something. Um, we'll talk about this later, but I'm not a Christian. I'm actually a truth seeker, and I'm out to find the truth. And I will tell you right now, I have had years and years and years of studying that I believe this is the 
truth. But it's weird, I took that word religions, I would have thought there were multiple truths. That's actually wrong, because Jesus says that there aren't multiple ways, there's only one. That was an eye-opening thing, but here's another thing that happened is, at the end of class, my professor said, hey, I know you guys are all learning new stuff. I want you to write an extra credit paper on what you learned in this class. Maybe something awesome you learned about one religion. And I was going to write this paper that I was so excited about because I was like, oh, my goodness. I found out something different. I found out something that is going to blow you away, teacher, that might even change your mind about religion because I discovered that every religion is exactly the same because you told me in the class I was a good student and I was going to write this paper of why they're the same and my Christianity is not like them because it's a relationship, not a religion. And I was so excited to write this paper, but then I had an A+, plus, so I didn't need to write it. But here's some things that came out of that that I was researching. There's three things that make us different than every religion. Every religion I found out was exactly the same. Are they all the same? Not exactly. They're different details. But as a general thing, they're all the same. And here's what the three things that stood out. So if you have your note sheets, write this down. The first thing is this. Other religions have to earn their way to God. All religions is about earning your way to God. You have to earn your way. See, we are lucky. We don't have to earn our way. God actually came down to us. Instead of us trying to earn our way up to him, he actually came down to us as Christians. He came down and said, listen, there's no way for you to get to me. It's impossible. You can't earn your way. So listen, I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to come and die on the cross for you. That's a huge difference, and no matter what religion you're looking at, all of them are trying to earn their way. That's what life's about. We have to earn our way. The second thing is this. Other religions have rules to appease their God. Other religions have rules to appease their gods. Now, listen, this one's a hard one because Taylor was, was pushing back and helped me like, Trav, um, isn't Christianity also something where we want to please our God? Well, it's a little different because here's the thing is, is that we are trying to, a lot of these religions, they're trying to appease God to the, and they have these rules that set up to, to earn favor with him. They're trying to earn favor with this God by the rules they follow, okay? But here's the cool thing is this, is we have a God who we don't need to do anything to earn his favor, we don't. He loved us. It says in the Bible that he loved us before we loved him. That's how it's awesome. The Bible is clear. Like, he loved us first. We don't have to do anything to appease him. Now, here's the cool thing is we don't even have to follow rules to get to heaven. But because we love God, and as an outpouring of my relationship with God, and because the Holy Spirit's working with me, I now want to do good works, but they're not to they're not because it's trying to appease him or to make him happy. It's because I love him and he loved me first. And then we do um, follow rules, okay? Um, the third thing is this. Other religions are not sure if they have done enough to get to heaven or to where they're going. So other religions are not sure. If you went to the Mormons, hey, will you become a, when you die, will you become a god of your own planet? And they're like, I don't know, I hope. Hey, um, Jehovah Witnesses, are you for sure that when you die, when you die, will you get to go to paradise? And they're like, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not totally sure. Hey, Buddhist, when you die, will you become to, uh, nirvana? I don't know. I hope. I hope I've done enough. Hindus, will you eventually reach enlightenment? Well, I'm hoping, but if not, this life may be another. The Muslims, will you go to heaven? Well, I'm hoping I did enough with Allah, but who knows? He could at any time change his mind. What? But I want you to know something is, if you ask me, Travis, Travis, if you die today, do you know where you're going to be? And I will tell you this, I know for certain. See, as Christians, we are the only thing that changes us for this, between us and other religions is they don't know for sure. We can know for sure. We know for sure. And you can have that confidence. And so it was awesome. As I was doing this study, I learned, man, we are way different. Now, I want you to know something. I am making some bold claims today. That's why I want you to be able to ask questions. Once you go, trap, push back, hold on. So are you saying? Yeah. I am starting to say that Jesus Christ is the only way. There is only one way. We're going to talk 
more about this. Now, here's something you're like, well, Trav, as I'm hanging out, and there's different churches that agree similar to what we believe. They seem similar. There's people that say, well, we're just like you. How do we know for sure that we believe the same things as others? Well, here's what it comes down to real quick. It comes down to who do people say Jesus is? Who do you say Jesus is? Because here's the thing. As Christians, we believe that Jesus is God. We're going to talk a little more about that, how Jesus proved it, how we have evidence that supports that Jesus is God. But it comes down to it's who we say, say Jesus is, and we say Jesus is God. So let me show you some things. For instance, um, go ahead and put it on the board because mine's a different order on my sheet. Okay, so um, the first thing is the Muslims. They say Jesus was a great prophet. They say Jesus was a great prophet, not God, okay? Uh, and in fact, we'll talk later about Muslims, but they actually say in, the, in their Quran, they say to follow the teachings of Jesus, yet Jesus claimed to be God and said that he was God, and he said, you should worship me pretty much, and Quran says that Jesus is not God, so that's already a big contradiction. And so when something contradicts itself, it's normally wrong. Okay, um, Jews, this is going to blow you away. The Jews say Jesus is a great teacher, a great teacher. So this is crazy. The Jews believe in the whole Old Testament, which is more than half of my Bible. The Old Testament talks about God and how God created the universe and how the whole Old Testament has stuff that we have learned about who God is and how he works and how he worked through the Jews. But the crazy part is this whole Old Testament points to a Savior, to the Messiah, Jesus. And there are prophecies pointing toward Jesus, but the Jews do not believe, or I should say um, Orthodox Jews do not believe that Jesus is God. And so here's what's crazy is they can believe the whole same thing, but if they don't believe Jesus is God, they actually don't worship the same God as us. Because who is our God? Jesus. So it's who we say Jesus is. Jesus is God. And we're going to talk about that evidence. So even the Jews don't believe the same thing as us. They don't. And this is crazy. Some, there are a lot of Orthodox Jews that are not going to be in heaven. And they're like, but we follow the whole testament. But yeah, but they don't, didn't follow you, Jesus. Jesus, like, sorry, you never followed me. Another one is this: the Mormons. The Mormons believe that Jesus is the archangel Michael, who came to Earth. He's actually um, the the first. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. I mixed it up. I even have an arrow in my sheet saying, Trap, you wrote it wrong in there. I should have looked up there. Um, I'm sorry. They believe he's the firstborn son of this planet. Okay, this is crazy. Of this planet. Yes, the Mormons believe that if you do everything you're supposed to, you when you die, you will go and have your own planet. Isn't that awesome? So, girls, here's the only bummer for you is, girls, you do not get your own planet. I'm sorry. But here's the thing. If you marry a Mormon and you do everything right, when you get married, this is crazy, on your wedding day that you go in this back room and you have this secret language, this secret word that you're going to say to each other. So when he dies and you die, you can say that word and you'll find each other and then you will find him and you will be the one that will help populate this new earth. Ooh, isn't that crazy? Okay? But that's what they believe. And so Jesus is just the firstborn son on this planet. Okay? So they don't believe that he's God. They believe he's the firstborn son on this planet. Then you have um, Jehovah Witnesses. They believe that um, Jesus is the Archangel Michael, okay? Mar Ar 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 yeah. Archangel Michael, and that he is was an angel, and then he became the, you know, Jesus, God's firstborn son on this planet. Okay, um, they believe that he actually died on a stake, not on a cross, which historical evidence shows that he died on a cross. So they kind of got that one wrong. Um, but they believe that. Okay, and then Hindus and Buddhists, they're a little different. They just 
they believe in multiple gods. So they would just say, ah, we don't know. Maybe Jesus is a God, but who really cares? There's all tons of gods. So it all comes down to who people say Jesus is. Yes. Catholics. Okay, so great question. I've had that question all the time, Catholics. First of all, um, Protestants broke away from the Catholics. The Catholics were actually a part of the Orthodox Church, was the five original churches in Christianity. When the disciples first started, when we're looking through this, they started churches. The main, five main churches were called the Orthodox Church. Catholic Church was a part of that. And then the Protestants, which is Christians right now, the, the evangelical Christians, actually, um, we separate from them. And so here's the difference is this, is that there, we have a lot of the same core beliefs, okay? Um, you'd have something called the, the Disciples' Creed. We, we would have, we believe all those same exact things. The problem with the Catholic Church that I will say right now is works, that works base that you have to earn your way to heaven, Catholics now have become where that's a big part of what they preach and what they teach is that almost like you're saved by works. I will tell you right now, my aunt grew up in a Christian home, married a Catholic, became a Catholic. She is on fire for God, loves the Lord. I know that when she dies, she'll be in heaven. Okay? But I'll tell you this. Um, there are a lot of Catholics that they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ because they have become works-based. Nope, I need to do my confessions. I need to do my prayers to Mary. And they have all these things they feel like they have to do to earn their way. So not all the Catholics are going to be in heaven. But here's the thing I'll tell you is there's a lot of people at North Coast Church that are not going to be in heaven because they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The only thing is what I would say is Catholics, it's kind of preached a little bit that you have to earn your way. Where at, at, in an evangelical Protestant church, no, it's going to be all about grace. There's nothing we can do. So that's kind of the core differences. But you Catholics, are they Christians? Yes. They, they, I would just say that would be my issue with them. So I'm not going to look at a Catholic and go, you're going to hell. I, I don't know. But I do know a little bit of their theology and what they preach is what can get a little dangerous. But they believe that Jesus Christ is God. So guess what? They would, have, they would answer the same as us on that one. Okay, hopefully that's clear enough. Okay, so here's the thing. You're like, Trav, you keep talking about how Jesus is the only way. That Christianity is the, the only truth. Trav, that's a bold, bold statement to say. And you're only saying it because there's no other religions here to fight you. You're only saying that because, well, you work at a church and that's how you make your money. Well, first of all, we're recording. This is going to be online. So, you know, I mean, online. So guess what? Anyone that doesn't believe that Christianity is the only way, they can refute it right now, and they can call me and go, yo, Trav, I think you're totally wrong, okay? So I want you to know there is that on there, okay? And you guys are welcome to call me because I'd love to talk to you more out there, okay? But here's the thing. I want you to see something that, first of all, I am not the one who claimed that Jesus is the only way. Jesus did in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He claimed in the New Testament that he had the power to forgive sins. There's only one that ha guy that has the power to forgive sins. That is God. Jesus is claiming he's God. But how do we know for sure that Jesus is God? Because here's the thing, Trav. You just read this Bible but everyone else has their own Bibles. So how do we know not just everybody has their own Bibles. They believe what's in there. And so you're, you're telling me a bunch of crap. Unless you can give me evidence outside of this thing. Can you give me evidence outside of this? And so what I want to do right now is I want to tell you how we know that Christianity is true. Okay? So it's on the back side of your sheet, and this is something I want you to know. This is evidence, and some of it's going to be about the Bible. Some of it's going to be that we can use, feel, touch, ask questions to make sense. So the first thing is this. It's about the Bible. I want you to know something. Write down this. The first evidence how we know Christianity is true is this. There are no contradictions in the Bible right here. There's no contradictions in there. And you're like, travel, of course. Well, let me explain something real quick. This Bible was written over 2,000 years, okay? It was written over a 2,000-year period, and it was written by more than 40 different artists, okay, authors. I don't know why I said artists. Authors. 
Over 40 authors wrote this thing. And here's what's crazy. Over that span of time and over that many different authors, People are going to have contradictions. If you and I left today and talked about today without having it being videoed, and we wrote down what we were saying, we would probably contradict ourselves sometimes. That's just us. Now imagine us over hundreds of years. You don't think there'd be contradictions, but there isn't one contradiction in this Bible. Not one. In fact, archaeologists for years have been trying to disprove this thing. And they say, you know what? There's no this people. This is wrong. This is wrong. Because the Bible's amazing. It puts dates. It puts people in it. Almost saying, hey, if we're wrong, prove it. Because we just made some huge claims. None of us generalized. Uh, there was some king who made some proclamation. They're like, no. There was a king um, in 40, in, you know, in 4400 AD, you know, BC, I mean, that said this, and his name was this, and he had this son, and he ruled this long. I mean, it is specific. And here's what's crazy is archaeologists have always had problems with it, and then guess what? They'll do digs, and they go, oh, my goodness. Like Mary Magdalene. For years, they said, Mary Magdalene, she is one of the followers of Jesus who was all over the New Testament and the gospel, and um, she was someone that was even at Jesus' death. He, she was under the cross. She's a big player, and people, archaeologists said, stupid, the Bible's totally wrong because there's no Magdalena. There is nothing. Like Mary of Magdalena is from, Mary Magdalene is from this town. And they're like, there is no town. Well, guess what? About 10 years ago, something like that. It was pretty recent. They were doing a dig on the Sea of Galilee. And guess what? They came across this rains and oh my goodness. And they started digging more like, this is a town. And they went, oh my goodness, this is Magdalena. Oh my goodness, there was a Mary Magdalena. Is that crazy? Archaeologists discover this all the time time. The Bible has no contradictions. I want you to know something. If you find out that this Bible has contradictions, I will burn this thing and I will walk away now because I am not a Christian because it makes me feel good. I'm not a Christian because that's what my parents were. I'm a Christian because I'm a truth seeker and this thing is true. But I will walk away. If you can prove it's not true, what's it worth? I'm leaving. I'm living a different life. I'm not believing this because I preach it and because I get paid for it. I preach this and believe it because it's true. I have done my own 40-something years of study. Second thing of how we know Christianity is true is fulfilled prophecy. Fulfilled prophecy. Okay, now, now here's the thing. First of all, if somebody prophesies something and then somebody all of a sudden fulfills that prophecy even a year later, five years later, that is pretty amazing, okay? Listen, if I could predict just the next five Super Bowls accurately and exactly the scores and how many yards the running backs are going to run and how many um, the touchdowns the quarterback's going to throw and the interception and who exact, if I could be that specific, you would go, oh my goodness, Trav, you must be of God or God. Because that's impossible. And that's why fulfilled prophecy is such a big deal. If somebody can fulfill prophecy. Now, now, here's the problem. People go, well, Trav, yes, Jesus fulfilled prophecy. You know how many prophecies Jesus fulfilled in this thing? There's over 200 prophecies in the Old Testament with the earliest one, 400 years gap between Jesus and the earliest you know, the most recent prophecy, that's it. Everything else was hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years earlier that Jesus fulfilled over 200 and something prophecies. Get this, just to fulfill eight prophecies, eight, is so incredibly hard. They did a thing of how hard it is. Here's how hard it is. Imagine filling the whole state of Texas with quarters. The whole state of Texas with quarters. And then I take one quarter and I put a huge red X on it. Or maybe even I just, just take a Sharpie and paint it red, okay? And I take that and I go into the state of Texas and I walk for a while and then I just stop somewhere, whether I'm in a valley, in a hill, who knows? And then I um, dig down deep and put the quarter somewhere. And then I blindfold you. 
And I go, here's the state of Texas. And you walk around the state of Texas blindfolded. And then you stop one place and you go, hmm, I think it's here. And you dig down and grab that quarter. That's how hard it is. You would, you'll never grab that quarter. It is impossible. It'll never happen. Never. That's just eight. He fulfilled over 200 prophecies. And now here's the problem is there are people that go, well, Trav, it's easy to fill for prophecies if you first fulfilled and then we made up the prophecies. Like, Trav, it's easy if somebody wrote a book now and says, there is going to be this guy that is going to be born on March 16th, 1977. He is going to have a twin brother named Trevor. And here's what's crazy is mom and dad are not going to know they're going to have twins. In fact, on the delivery table, um, one of the brothers is going to start down the, the chute to get delivered. And the heartbeats are going to separate. And we're going it's going to be panic. And we're going to check. And we're going to fill feet. And then we're going to do an operation, emergency operation. And we're going to pull out Travis. And we're going to see Travis. And Travis is going to be like, oh, my goodness. And we're like, whew, whew, luckily he's alive. Put on the table and go to... Um, tie up mom and go, wait a minute, there's still another one in there and pull out Trevor. And then when Travis is um, in Little League, his brother's going to rupture his spleen and at a, ba- at a baseball game. Um, then when he's in high school, and if you could tell it, well, yes, you already know it now. And people go, guess what? That's the thing about the Bible is, you know what's weird is, when did they write it? There's a chance that you could have put all this in, Jesus fell in scripture, and you could have made all the prophecies Brilliant done. See, that's why this thing is fake. Except, except about 100 years ago, in 19, in the 1920s, 1930s, there's some shepherds in Israel, okay? And they're throwing rocks in these caves because they're bored. And all of a sudden, when they're throwing these rocks, they hear this clay pot break. And it's like up in this huge cave, up on the thing. And they're like, oh, let's go investigate it. And they go up there. And when they um, dig the ground, they find all these manuscripts called the Dead Sea Scrolls, what are they? They are the whole Old Testament. The whole Old Testament is preserved, and guess what? They were able to carbon date it to over 100 years before Jesus even was on the earth. So now we know that the Old Testament really was written before Jesus came, and we have evidence and proof. So they didn't just write this thing and make sure it all lined up. No, no. We actually now know for sure that Jesus did fulfill these prophecies. So that's a second reason how we know Christianity has to be true. But there's a third one. The third one is probably the most credible evidence of all of them. It's called the empty tomb. I want you to understand something. Jesus Christ claimed to be God, and he's alive because he conquered death. And here's the thing. No one in the history of the world who's ever claimed to be God No one in the history world has ever started a religion, conquered death. There's only one person in the world that has done that. That is Jesus, and he rose again. We cannot find his body. But remember all those religions I told you about? Joseph Smith, we can find his body because he's dead. And no one claims he's alive. Um, Charles from Jehovah's Witnesses, we can find his body. He's dead. Buddha, we can find his body. Muhammad, we can find his body. We can They are dead. They are dead. So why would I believe in a religion where the person in charge is dead? So that means that religion must be dead. Our God is alive. And you're like, but Trav, how do we know? Because that's a cool thing to say because we we can't see him. How do we know he's alive? That's what's awesome is. There's three pieces of evidence that prove that he is still alive or at least are pretty incredible evidences. The first thing is this. There were over 500 witnesses that saw Jesus after he rose again. Over 500 witnesses. This is even crazier. When they started writing the New Testament and talking about this Jesus that rose again, the witnesses were still alive. And those 500 went, no, no, that's not true. I was there. We were all hallucinating. Or, no, no, that's not true. We didn't really see him. No, there was plenty of time for people to contradict what the Bible said, and no one did. Historians that didn't write the Bible, that aren't Christians, have written, there was a Jesus that walked on the earth, he died on a cross, and we can't find his body. And people claimed he's alive, and they cannot find his body. 500 witnesses saw it. Second piece of evidence, which is huge, is this. 
Nobody would die for a lie. I don't know any of you that would just die for a lie. No one's ever done that in the history of the world. Now, I will say this. People will die for a lie if they've been deceived. And there's a couple people to keep a deception alive. Maybe one person would die. But here's what's crazy. All the disciples... The 11 disciples, you know, one of them was Judas. He actually hung himself because he is the one who betrayed Jesus. But the other 11, 10 of those 11, 10 of those 11 died horrible, horrible deaths because they believed in Jesus. The last one, John, um, he didn't die um, a horrible death. He got put on an island, and that was his punishment because he believed that Jesus was God. Okay? But listen to this. Every single one of those 10 that died horrible deaths, did you know that every single one of them at the last minute they said, it was a joke, we're lying, I'm, I'm totally lying, it's, it's not true. Did you know every single one of them, they would have said, pat on the back, tick the dust, okay, man, you're good, here you go, and here's a couple hundred dollars, get out of here. Every single one of them, if they would have just said, I'm lying, I'm lying, it's fake, could have walked. People don't do that. They don't make up a lie, and then when you're going to, to kill them and torture them and do crazy stuff, pull their guts out and, like, you know, this crazy stuff. People don't go, I'm going to keep believing a lie. They don't do that. And all of them died horrible deaths. That's evidence showed they must have believed that Jesus really did rise from the dead. They must have seen him. And here's the last piece of evidence is the disciples' courage. You guys need to understand something. The Bible talks about how the disciples were wusses. When Jesus got arrested, they fled. They were scared. Peter was so scared that he denied knowing Jesus three times. He even cussed. He said, I don't effing know him. Get out of here. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, they have courage. They're able to start a whole movement. They're like, we believe, like, that doesn't happen. Their courage alone and to say, man, he must have really rose from the grave. So listen, I want you to know something. There is so much evidence that I have gone on my own journey that Jesus is the one true God, and we should believe him. Now, I didn't tell you all this so that you could now go home and leave and go mic drop. Hey, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. My hope is it gives you confidence, but you need to understand something. That means your friends don't know Jesus Christ. They don't know the one way. And my hope would be that you lovingly would start to set an example. Lovingly, you would say, hey, you need to come check out church. You need to know my God. And that's my hope for you, is that we will have that confidence, that we will go, and we will actually be willing to tell other people about that. So listen, that was a ton of stuff. We probably took, yes, I took way too long. Way, way too long. I apologize. Um, But... Here's what I want to do. We have no time for questions. You guys seem like you didn't have questions, so maybe I was just very clear, or you were bored, or you actually were like, dang, I was into that. I don't know which one it is. But I want to let you know something after I pray. If you still have questions about what we talked about, want to know more so about Catholicism, want to know more so about different religions, I'm here, and I'd love to talk to you more about it. But let me go ahead and pray, and then you guys can take off. Dear God, I just thank you so much for who you are, Lord. Lord, I just pray that... You would, um, Lord, use what we learned today, Lord, to give us confidence. And that you would continue to, to just work in our lives and start to use us, Lord. And that, Lord, we would be careful, but confidently careful about how we talk to us about Christ and how we want to win them over by, by loving them and, and giving opportunities to come learn about our Savior, you, Lord. We love you so much. And in your name, amen.